Uh, my name's Joe Truman. I'm a professional track sprint cyclist and I'm training for the Olympics. Yeah, so core training is one of those where I think people think you don't need to focus on it solely because you're doing compound exercise in the gym. But I think as cyclists, we do do quite a bit because we do spend hours on the bike where it can become disengaged. So I think throwing in a core session around, around your training, not even necessarily in specific gym sessions, um, just around your road rides and your training is going to be really helpful. So number one for me would be the bird dog row. I think it's one of those exercises which looks easy, but in fact it's really difficult. But I think for me that would be number one. Similar to cycling as well, so you can sort of you can see how it overlays on the bike, pulling with one arm while the other legs extended. And I think for me that would probably be my go-to if I could just do one. Yeah, so on the bike, while our arms are straight and sort of solid, our legs are pedaling, and that can obviously cause some twisting and sort of rounding in the back. Um, and I think anything you can do to sort of limit that is always going to be beneficial. So the less your core generally moves, the more that the power is going to be going straight to the pedals, and you don't want any power leakage through your back. So I think anti rotation is pretty important. Number two for me would be the prone hold. So on a bike, you're very flexing your lower back and you can't really activate it in that position. So I like to spend quite a bit of time in a, in a flat back position in a, in a neutral spine, really working those erectors. And I think that's really going to be beneficial for injury prevention. Yeah, for the everyday cycles, I say endurance in those positions is paramount. Um, for me, on the track where our vent's quite short, we build a lot of weight into it, so we're putting bars on our backs or holes and kettlebells here. And we're maybe only doing 30 second reps, but with a lot of weight. But I think for the everyday person doing cycling as a, as a hobby or commuting, I think definitely build up that endurance. I think you can look to almost hold that for two and a half minutes. I think that'd be a good baseline. So number three for me would be the suitcase carry, usually in 30 meter walks. I think it's really important because it's very dynamic and all the time you're moving, you're working those small little muscles in your core, very similar to on the bike when you're, you're moving. So I think I'd be doing maybe three or four sets of 30 meters, just holding in one arm. And I think that dynamic core work is going to be really beneficial. For sprint cycling, grip strength is absolutely important. People have said before, like one of the biggest indicators of standing start performance is how hard you can hold the bars and make sure that there's no energy leakage in every single watt that you're putting out through your legs is going, going through your arms and through your grip. So I think it's really important. 